my name is Guy Bertillon and uh, today I'll be doing an unboxing of uh, Gilo's Balsa F4U-4 Corsair, a World War II fighter uh, uh, mainly based in the Pacific. Um, this is um, on more of an unusual kit that I'll unbox. It's actually the biggest one I've ever unboxed. Um, I'll explain really quick the history of why I'm doing a balsa kit and not a plastic kit as, as, as I usually do. Um, I got three boys and um, each one when they've turned five years old I've built them a, a, scale, a scale model airplane which hangs from their ceiling. Um, unfortunately plastic kits are not big enough uh, to, uh, to display properly and um, the best alternative I found were these balsa kits. Balsa kits, sorry. Um, I built for my first son a uh, DR1 uh, Fokker triplane, the Red Baron, basically, uh, which everyone sh I'm sure knows. Uh, that was pretty interesting build. I, it was the first wood kit I built. Pretty big, good size. Um, a bit of a challenge with the tr three wings. Um, was a lot of work. But it, it was nice, you know, you you wind up the propeller, there was elastic band inside, and you let it go and it would spin. Uh, and, and my kid loves it. It's It's been hanging for a ceiling for the past uh, almost six years now. Uh, he's going on 11 soon. Um, my other son, my second son, um, I built for him two years ago, yeah, about two years ago, um, a P-40 Warhawk. And uh, that that's been going. Uh, that 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 project went pretty well, uh, much easier than the um, than the DR1 Fokker. Um, a bit bigger too, um, but with one wing, it was it was pretty easy, and uh, I enjoyed it a lot. It was a lot of fun. The experience I gained from the first plane went went pretty well for the second one. So I got three boys, and my youngest son just turned four last month, uh, actually uh, a month and a half ago. Um so I, I gotta get started working on uh, on his plane so when he turns five next January um, it'll be ready um, I'm starting it soon um, it's still very early in the year um, the reason why is when it's uh, when it's summertime I want to do go and spray paint it outside uh, it's, it's a big kit it actually is the a bit bigger I think an inch or so bigger than the p40 Warhawk I built um, so th this kit, uh, is, is going to be massive, and I, I like the I like the idea of the um, the bent wings. Uh, it adds a little extra challenge uh, that this kit will have that the P40 didn't have. Uh, but I'm sure it'll be a pretty pretty decent, not too complicated build. Um, and also another thing I like is the, the they're mainly blue. Um, the Red Baron is red. The P40 Warhawk was green. So this blue color, it, it's a nice mix. So. Um, Enough about the history of, of um, why and explaining why I'm building this kit. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, do the unboxing and see what's inside. Thank you. Okay, so let's go with the unboxing here. Let me uh, find my Exacto and uh, open this massive kit. I've been uh, itching to open this up for a little while now, so finally glad today's the day. For those who are interested, the kit is 1 16th scale, um, and the wingspan of this kit is 30 and 3 quarters of an inch. So that that's uh, that's a pretty lengthy, uh, a pretty wide uh, wingspan. Um, says it's gonna be. Uh, Flown by rubber power, which I wouldn't dare try. Um, for free flight, you uh, control, simple radio control. I've seen some YouTube videos, but uh, then again, I wouldn't try it either. So, <laughs> and this is interesting. I've just noticed here it says plastic wheel pivot block. That's very interesting. I had to do a lot of customization in the uh, in the wheels for uh, my P40. Uh, uh, plane, so on. I'm very interested here. Scale model for adult collector. Hmm. Let's see what we got. All right. Oh, this is interesting. 
Very interesting. Wow, these are huge decals. I've never seen anything this big before. This is insane. Wow. I wonder what these are. Very interesting. Huh. Oh, I like this. Markings with Japanese kills. Very nice. Hmm. Very, very good. Alright. Afterwards. There's a lot of stuff in here. This is the, the fabric that will eventually cover it. A little letter from Gilo's model kits. I won't read it, I won't bore you and read it all, but I'm just gonna have a quick look. Basically it's a parts list. Some basic instructions. That's pretty simple. Of how to cover the uh, tissue. The main, I think this is the main plan, the main instruction kit. Wing, uh, body assembly. And I'll admit, you know, unlike a traditional plastic kit where the exterior is very nicely finished, I find it a lot of fun building all these ribs. Uh, I remember building my first one many years ago, um, and it, it was daunting, and it took me a long time to finish it, but because there was a lot of wings, but it was a lot of fun at the same time, you know, and um, just, you know gluing them out and all that, it's, it's actually fairly quick, it's not that bad. I think the longest part is putting tissue covering the whole frame. That That's a lot longer a process. But it looks pretty simple, nothing uh, nothing's too scary. It's more the V part that, uh, that scares me more. The plastic. And um, yeah, yeah, it's not too bad. Quite a bit of wow, wow. So afterwards, um, this is huge. Oh my god! These are to scale. I mean, you can put parts over this to to understand. And actually, what what I do is, I have a piece of cardboard. I put this on top. I usually make a photocopy, I tape it, I then put um, wax paper over it, and then I can start working on it, like putting the pieces and, and gluing it together. So this is pretty big. This is actually what scares me the most, this, this V-wing. I'm very curious how that's going to go. Well, although the um, the uh, when I did the P-40, it had a, a curved shape on the outside, where the, between the wing and the, and the hull of the aircraft. It was. It looked difficult, and actually wasn't that bad. So I, I it, I'm sure it'll be okay. The propeller was actually hard. I actually had to carve one because I didn't like the plastic one, I, and I carved it. But uh, let's flip this around here. For those who are interested in putting a motor or engine, I can't remember which one's which. One's gas. One's electric. Uh, it's very well explained with the wiring. I'm, I'm not going to go that far. But, uh, no, it's, it's, this is the scale it is. This is massive. This is huge. I mean, this, my kid's going to love it. And here we got all the decals where we're supposed to position them. Yeah, that's going to look good. And just notice it's got a nice little, a huge arrow here, sorry. They even show how you can bend the wings. I'm not going to do that, but uh, that's interesting. So afterwards, let me just pull this up, get it out of the way. That is huge. What is this? More wing. <laughs> this is crazy. Uh, and I could see how, you know, these 
these parts start, these ribs, I guess you can call them, start off straight and quietly about mid-range they start having an angle. And that's going to be interesting to, tr to do. <laughs> oh, and I like how the, this is, has a much, it's on camera. This has a much more detailed uh, landing gear. Way more detailed than the, the P-40 Warhawk. I'm gonna have fun just photocopying these. Usually, I have to take a couple, put them together, and tape them up to make a good photocopy, so I don't I don't damage the original. Wow, this is big. I'm hoping the pilot's included. I think it is. I think I saw something, but I'm not 100 percent sure. Well, let's find out. So let me just get rid of this here. What do we have here? I'm guessing this must go inside, kind of like a, a decal. Um, now, for a normal scale model, I, I would cringe at using this, but I did do it on the P-40 Warhawk, uh, the, 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 the Fokker triplane, I didn't, and uh, it went well. But, um, And, and I was actually surprised, you know, you would think it wouldn't look good, but no, it, it was actually pretty decent. I'm not sure about this part using that in the landing gear, but I'll experiment, I'll see, you know. Wires for the landing gear. Let's put that here. The plastic parts. This I hate. You know, uh, unfortunately, all their plastic parts and gilo kits I've seen are always going to be this one huge sheet. It's not like a sprue that you would see on a plastic model kit. You got to cut these out. Although I am happy to say there are there are sorry there are bombs, which you know that's a nice extra detail. Um, the P40 Warhawk I had to. It suggested I scratch build a I drop a drop tank a fuel drop tank. Which I didn't do. It was just too much. I mean, with the propeller and all. Uh, but uh, this is nice. I, I really am happy about that. I don't see a pilot, unfortunately. It's a bit too bad. Uh, motor has a good amount of detail, so that that's pretty good. So let's let's get on to the wood. Okay. So enough with the plastic sheet. Next. That's what I didn't want to see. <laughs> This cheap propeller, so that, eh, it's huge. Um, it's not actually not in scale. I'm pretty sure of it. Like like my previous planes, when I measured it, it, it didn't match up at all. Uh, so it looks like I'll be scratch building out of Belsa and another propeller. It wasn't that bad. As as it's not as bad as it looks, despite the twisted look uh, of it. Uh, a bit of research uh, to find an accurate looking one. Uh, did the job and uh, it, it's just a lot of sanding that's all um, that's one big ra massive radial motor I'm surprised they I don't get why we have that plus this hmm. I guess it depends how you want to build the kit interesting nice and we do have a pilot let me, let me get this off here Hmm. Crude, but um, it'll probably do the job. Because, I mean, when you're looking at it through this little window, which will be painted, you know, masked and all that, you don't see a whole lot of detail. So, this this is more than enough. Uh, more than enough detail for, for, for the job. So, I'm glad. I'm glad there's that. It's the first time I've seen one on such kits. wheels string and fiber I guess I'm not sure what that's for maybe a seat belt I, I don't know that's interesting this I if I'm not mistaken it's more for uh, fire resistance uh, within if you put a motor inside the plane um, I don't believe I actually used it on my other kits so 
but for those interested, you know, there, there's, I don't know what it actually is, just strange, thick, it's not, it's kind of like a plastic, I guess, it's hard to say, but, uh, anyhow. Rubber band, that's if you want to have the propeller spin. I, I'd be tempted. I'm actually thinking of actually integrating somehow a little motor that would run on solar power and would quietly spin the propeller. I think that would be really cool. You know, just, just a gentle spin. I don't know. I'm, I'm debating that. I think if I did that, my other two kids would be jealous. Um, uh, not sure what that's for. Lots of little bits of wood. This is used to, um, put throughout the ribs to strengthen it. Um, there's always more than what you ever need. I mean, this is way plenty. And it's laser cut. That's that's what's nice about this. Unlike maybe a lot of the old kits, if you go back 20, 30 years ago, when this was more popular, these are all laser cut. They're they're pretty accurate, pretty uh, pretty good. Here we got thicker ones, I guess, for areas that need uh, more um, rigidity. Very thick ones, actually. I've never seen any this thick. What else we got here? Some more. Oh gee, there there is a lot. Wow. A lot of wiring too. I'm surprised. I'm wondering what these very thick ones are for. It's amazing. It's a very light wood. And I could crush this with my fingers. I mean, this is this 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 is so soft. It's ridiculous. Almost like styrofoam. Hmm. Nice thick one there. This one's actually pretty m much more dense. This is probably for landing gear. I would suspect. I actually, in my previous kit, uh, the P40, I actually added some wiring just to add a little, like, and, and I put uh, little bits of masking tape, which once I painted over it with white spray paint, it didn't show and just looked like ribs, you know, like little washers or whatever around the strut. And with the wiring, it was at, which I left, I put at the end uh, black, it added a lot of extra detail and it was simple to do. And for the last bit, the parts themselves. And they're easy to pop out. This, these are probably, these are flat, very flexible um, kind of pieces. This is probably areas that um, the tissue won't suffice. It needs something a bit more rigid. So I'm just expecting that's it. And here we can see the you can see the burns of the laser cuts, and they come out as you can see here very easily, little effort at all. Um, I did in previous kits, and I'm just going to show you here. the The laser burns it, and I tended to sand them on previous kits. Um, the I did experiment and not sand some of them, and I find depending on the color, uh, in this case, um, it's mainly blue. I don't believe there's any white underneath it. I could be mistaken, but um, when it's white and you paint white on top, it kind of stuck through. So I, I tended to sand them. So got to be careful depending on the color you you're gonna paint. So yeah, lots of different parts here. Whoop. Hope I didn't break that. No, no, I'm, I'm good. So I'd say there's probably a lot less parts than other kits. It's like a, a, a triplane. Um, oh, this is nice. 
they actually do the bend of the wing. I'm sure that's it. I mean, it's so obvious. That's going to help a lot. That's going to make life a lot easier. See, this, this is what was scaring me the most of this kit. And I, I think they, they're being nice with us. They're, <laughs> they did us a favor. But yeah, I mean, uh, parts-wise, I don't, I don't see nearly as many. So this is pretty good. This is interesting, though. These, I don't believe these are laser cut. They're not, because if I look at a laser cut, you can see it's dark and you, they go through. This one, it looks like it's stamped. I can see some pressure marks and uh, some corners. So this is stamp cut. And it doesn't go through. So. You, I'm guessing I'm going to have to pass an exacto blade to get these out. Or maybe not. Maybe just a little bending and... Yeah, okay, maybe it's not as bad as I thought. So, yeah, very interesting. Alright, so that's the unboxing of the uh, Corsair. Um, lots, of, uh, lots of surprises. Um, I'd say the thing that surprised me the most was the fact that bombs were included. Um, often they'll add these details, this is what I've seen in the past, but it's just an artist's impression. In this case, no, it's there, even the pilot, I mean, that, that, that really surprised me. Um, a bit of deception about the stamped, uh, sorry, the stamped parts. Not major, but, you know, I would have preferred 100% laser, that, that would have been obviously much more interesting. Uh, please, if I can find some here. There we go. Laser cut, always preferred. You know that that's that's the way to go. Uh, the just the sheer size of it uh, is very su surprising, and I'm sure my kids will enjoy watching, seeing this this kit grow. So I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, leave it. Feel free to leave any comments. Um, I'll put a link to my blog, my skill model blog that. Um, I'll be putting a lot of pictures regularly, uh, showing the development of, of the of the build, and uh, hopefully within less than a year, uh, we'll have a a happy uh, little boy turning five who will be amazed and, and enjoy his new airplane hanging from the ceiling and on his hands, of course. <laughs> Thank you.